Welcome to the setup manual for the HiPod X-Line. Let's begin with the cases. We've simplified the unit into two cases, one for the tube and base, and another for the accessories. The handle on these cases has been beefed up to take even more wear and tear. To begin setting up your unit, you will start with the accessory case. Find the yellow base plate with wheels inside and place it on the ground. Now you are going to want to retrieve your tube and base case. From inside this case, grab the attached tube and base and place them into the plate on the ground. You will see in the next portion of this video that on the base plate there is a ratchet that must be unlocked to receive the base and tubes. Now that the base has been inserted into the base plate, you will need to lock it into place. Find the ratchet at the bottom and turn it until it becomes tight. You can pop it out to the side to readjust its position, lock it back into place, and turn to secure the ratchet. Now we will begin the leg setup. On arrival, you will find that your HiPod legs are locked into the closed position with the leg locking pin. You will need to remove this pin and move it and the leg to the exterior hole, locking the pin through the leg itself and the bracket. You will not lock the pin either behind the leg or in front of the leg, as this does nothing to secure it before elevation. You will see that these are examples of how not to lock the leg. Again, make sure to lock the leg with the leg pin on the exterior hole so that the pin is going through the leg and the bracket itself. This locks the leg into position. At this point in the setup, you can extend the HiPod legs to their full length. Lock them loosely as you will most likely need to adjust them in the next step. Check the bubble on the top of the HiPod base to ensure that your legs are set evenly. Adjust the legs to make them level and check the bubble again. At this point in the setup, your unit should look like this, legs extended and locked into place. Shake the silver ring at the top of the base to confirm that your legs are rock solid. Any movement, readjust and try again. Once the leg is confirmed to be stable and the primary leg lock has been tightened, you can adjust the second leg lock into place. This is a redundant safety lock in case the primary lock ever gives way or slips. Both leg locks must always be used on each leg. Never extend a high pod tubing system until both leg locks are in place. You can see another view here of what these leg locks look like in their proper positions. Now, on the top of the base, just above the silver ring, you will find another ratchet. It's the same style as the one on the base plate. When it's open, you will be able to swing the tubes left and right. If you close the ratchet like this, it will grab the tubes inside of the base. This holds the tubes in the base while you're extending the tubing. You no longer need a tool to attach the high pod head to the tubes. Simply find the head in the case and attach it to the top of the tubes. Then tighten it to the tubes with the ratchet you will find directly under the head. This will lock it securely into place. You can see a closer view of this motion here. When attaching the high pod handle, make sure to mount the handle from the reverse side of where the pins are dangling from the tubes. Attach the handle by tightening the screw until it clamps onto the poles and holds by itself. Purchase the X17 or the X23. Your monitor bracket will include an extra Y-shaped piece that acts as a sizer for the tube so it can fit. If you have the X31, this piece will not be included. Take the monitor bracket, open it, and place it around the tubes. Once adjusted into position, Twist the silver metal screw until it clamps down on the bracket, holding it to the tubes. You can see another view of this motion here. Notice the ratchet on the LCD bracket. If you unlock this ratchet, you will be able to adjust the angle at which the LCD sits on the bracket itself. Always make sure to unlock this ratchet before adjusting the angle of the LCD. Now we will attach the head to the handle. 
On the bottom of the high pod handle, you will see two nylon cords sticking out with carabiners attached. Pull out one of the nylon cords in one direction and the other in the opposite direction, meaning that in this camera view, one will go left and one will go right. Make sure that the cords are coming out of the bottom of the handle, allowing it to rotate the head. Also, make sure that your ropes are not crisscrossed. Now, on the handle itself, you will find two large silver screws. This first one is what's called the position lock screw. This will maintain the position of the handle wherever it happens to be at the moment when tightened. If you unlock it, the handle will move again. Now the second screw on the handle is found at the bottom. It's right in between where the two black nylon cords come out of the handle. If this screw is unlocked, you will be able to pull the cords out of the handle. If you lock that screw, you will no longer be able to pull these cords out. The purpose for this is when the unit is fully elevated so that you have the cords locked and they will not slip while moving the handle up and down. During setup, you will want to leave the cord tension screw open so that you can pull the ropes out of the handle. Now, all clients will receive a new style remote, and I wanted to familiarize you with the physical characteristics. You'll receive this remote mounting bracket pre-attached to your handle. It will allow you to move the handle and the tower in all directions. This stays permanently attached, and you take the remote, shown here, and simply slide it onto this mounting apparatus via the groove in the back. It will click into place. On the side, you'll see a button which says press to release, which allows the remote to be disconnected from this mounting bracket. You'll want to take the remote off and store it separately each time for safety, but leave the mounting bracket on the handle for ease of use. To mount the LCD to the monitor bracket, find the groove in the back of the LCD. Match this up with the tip of the monitor bracket and slide into place. When satisfied, you can tighten the LCD to the bracket by twisting the screw in the back. Now we're going to attach power to the screen. Find the LCD battery, which looks like this. There's Velcro on the back and just stick it to the back of the screen. There's a power converter cable that goes between the battery and the screen. It looks like this. You're gonna plug the round end into the DC port on the screen. And then on the opposite side, you'll connect the USB cord to the battery itself. Look for the higher of the voltage out ports on the battery. You can see the same motion from two different angles in this portion of the video. Again, this is for the screen connection and then on the opposite side to the USB port on the battery. Once connected to power, your screen will either automatically turn on or you'll see a red power light, which you'll need to click the button to turn on the screen. Now we're going to start connecting the cables for the unit. This is the set of cables for the X-Series. You'll see there are items pre-attached. This is a strain relief and quick release for the camera. It protects the cables under the camera while in use. This is the line cable with the yellow tag that controls camera zoom and record functions. Also, you'll see an HDMI micro cable which plugs directly to the camera. And then at the bottom, HDMI standard for your LCD and the white cable is the link which controls remote zoom and record functions, which plugs into the remote. All of these are put together for ease of use and also so you don't have to worry about applying these each time. This again is the strain relief and quick release plate. Notice the lever that you'll need to open and close to allow the camera to snap in and out. The HDMI cable will come out of one side of this plate and the LAN cable, which controls zoom and record functions, will come out of the opposite side of the plate. I'll show you how to attach that in the following section. Use the threaded hole shown in this image to attach the strain relief plate to the high pod head. You'll need to put the plate onto the high pod head with the cables facing the right directions. The HDMI cable will need to be on the left side of the plate and the LAN cable for zoom and record control will be on the right side. You'll see it has a yellow tag. Also, again, note the lever that will be in the back of the plate. You'll connect with one of the brass screws that's attached to the high pod head. Typically, you use the groove for the high pod head that's on the very outside of the head. This is a view of the bottom of the strain relief plate before setup. 
Note where the holes are being used and how the brass screw is gonna connect. Now put the plate with cables on top of the high pod head and bring the brass screw up and into the threaded hole from the bottom of the high pod head. This will sandwich it together. There's a secondary screw which you'll then need to bring up after the primary screw has been connected as fully as possible. The secondary screw is what cinches the plate in place so it can't move afterwards. Just be aware there are two sections of this. Now again, since this is a new remote, I'm going to revisit the connection and continue to the cables. Take the remote as shown here, line up with the groove in the back to connect to the mounting bracket pre-attached to your handle. It'll connect like this and you can take it off again with the button on the side which says press to release. Now we're going to connect the cable for the remote control to the remote. You'll see it has a red head on the cable tip. This is part of that cable bundle shown earlier. Just plug that cord into the port of the remote control and you should see the remote light up when the camera is powered. Now I wanna talk about how to adjust the angle of attack on the remote in regards to how it's connected to the handle itself. You can see the range of motion that you will use this handle in while filming. If you're doing an end zone shot, you're gonna to need to turn it pretty high from bottom to top so that you can have the camera turned down. Now on the back, you can see the screws where you can manually adjust the physical connection but it's much easier to change this with the ropes. Once you have the tower in the air, leave the silver pin open where the ropes come out of the handle at the bottom. Then by adjusting how much slack is either in front or behind of the handle by pulling the ropes in and out, you can adjust the default point at which the remote will sit. This is a much easier way to adjust the angle of the remote on the handle rather than going all the way to the physical adjustment using a tool and screws on the back. But we'll show that in a second. Once you have the angle of attack the way you want it, you will need to lock that silver pin at the bottom so it holds the position for you. Otherwise, it'll slip back to the original point. Now, if you want to adjust the physical connection of the remote bracket to the handle, see the two screws on the back of the bracket itself. Then you will need to source an Allen key metric and then open these screws so that you can turn the bracket how you like it. Close again to finish. This is the only part of the high pod you'd need to source a tool for. Otherwise, adjust with the ropes. Now we are going to begin to set up the camera. I'm gonna bring your attention to the quick release plate, which is set in the open position, ready to accept the camera. On the camera itself, you'll have a little spud at the bottom that's ready to connect to this mounting mechanism. Also, just note that all technical information regarding menus and camera setup will be included at the end of this video. Take the camera, have the lever open on the quick release and snap into place. This connects the two pieces together. Now, when it's time to take the camera off, simply open the lever again and the camera will come out. There are two little levers on that quick release, so just make sure that they're moving together. Snap back in and we're ready to connect the cables. Open the camera's LCD window where you will access the HDMI port. You will need to leave that window open for the entire time you're filming to keep the camera on. Inside, you'll see the HDMI port next to where the SD card plugs in. Take the HDMI cable and plug it into the port. Note how we've relieved the strain with the plates. On the opposite side, near where there's a USB cord in the handle strap, you'll find a little door that says multi. Plug the LAN cable into that port. It's the cord with the yellow tag attached. Here's a view of the LAN cable from the opposite side of the camera. And then from the reverse angle, here's the HDMI cable. Now on the spud where the head connected to the top of the high pod tubes, you'll find a hook. There's also a carabiner physically attached to your cables and take the carabiner and attach it to the hook. This acts as a secondary strain relief. There's also a piece of Velcro. Wind it around the top spud a few times to keep it clean and out of the way. There are two types of LCDs, one that only has HDMI in and another with HDMI loop through. I'm showing the loop through screen, which is an upgrade in this video. You'll have three ports, two for HDMI in and one for HDMI back out. Otherwise, you'll have two ports for HDMI in only with the default screen. To connect the video signal, find your standard HDMI cable and plug it into the top HDMI in for HDMI 1. Otherwise, you'll have to cycle through the screen options for HDMI 2. Now we're gonna set up the camera battery. There are two ways to do this and I'll explain both approaches. For the first style, we're going to attach the battery directly to the camera plate from the bottom. To do so, take the brass screw, the second one that's on the head, and there's a third in your overall case for the tower, and then sandwich the battery to the plate so that it's hanging down from the bottom. 
This has the benefit of keeping all of the cables neat, which I'll show in a moment, but it does add a little bit more weight to the head. So depending on your preference, you might want to mount it here or to the spot we'll go over next. The cable you will use to connect the camera to the battery itself looks like this. It's a female USB to a male USB adapter. Find the small USB cord coming out of the camera from the hand strap and plug the female end of the adapter into that cable. Run the cable over to the battery using the male end of the USB to connect to the battery. You may need to click the battery to activate it and turn it on so it begins to provide power. Now this next section is regarding cable management. You will have all of this extra slack with the battery adapter and you're going to want to take that up and hold it inside of the camera's hand strap. Open up the velcro, wind it up a few times, and then just velcro it shut. This helps to keep the cables neat and out of the way so you won't have the cables catching at any point on the unit. More broadly, cable management is one of the most important parts of operating and owning a high pod. Regardless of what cable system you're using, old SD cables, the current HDMIs, or something special, you need to make sure that the camera with the head on top can move in all directions without anything yanking or tugging at any point in the motion. This is critical to protecting your electronics long term. Now, the cables are naturally going to try and pull down when you elevate the camera with cables connected into the air. Without the strain reliefs we've designed, you'll cause damage on the cable tips, bending the cables eventually, or you can actually widen the port in the camera, which there is no way to fix. If you ever replace your cables, you must thread them back through the strain reliefs, whether they be for the remote or for the camera connectors. Also, how you treat the cables before and after a filming session can make all the difference. Banging them around, knocking into things, stepping on the cables needs to be avoided at all costs. Proper cable management can literally make the difference between a functional or a non-functional system on game day. Now let's move on to the second way to mount the battery for the camera. With this approach, you'll mount the battery through the hook where you put the carabiner holding the cables earlier. Again, find a brass screw, insert the screw through the hook, and then attach the battery through the adapter. You'll have a connection which looks like this. It's a little tight, but you can do it. Just make sure the battery is not interfering with the way that the cables for the head to the handle need to operate. Now, this is why this method is not my favorite. Note how many cables need to be managed when the head moves. You have another cable which is going to be moving from a different connection point between the battery and the camera. You're gonna need to make sure that these cables are organized in a way where they're not gonna catch at any point. There's just more to manage with this approach, and because there are more variables, it is my lesser recommended option. However, it does take the weight of the battery off the plate, and for some people, that makes a big difference. So it is a preference situation, but you need to be aware of all the variables involved if using the approach where you put the battery on the tubes of the tower itself. Now, when using the rain gear, it's best to mount the battery under the camera just for maximum coverage. To mount the rain gear for the camera, you'll put the plate on which that rain gear sits directly under the strain relief plate where you mounted the camera. Just sandwich them together and then insert the brass screw to hold them on. Pull the rain gear itself over the camera and cover everything until satisfied. Then cinch the cord up on the other side so that everything is tight and covered, no rain can get in. It'll look like this when you're done. The rain gear for the LCD is fairly self-explanatory, just cover the screen and that will do the job. Same for the remote, you just mount the rain gear for the remote over the top of the unit and then control from on top with your hand. Now that the tower is set up, I'm going to go over some important things you should know about your camera. Now if you want the camera's text and record data to show on the LCD while you're recording, follow these steps. From the default screen, hit the menu button and then select camera mic in the top middle. It'll bounce you into a scroll window and then look for scene selection. Your display will change to look like this. Then on the far right, you'll see an arrow on the bottom, go ahead and click on that, and leave your screen here. You'll see standby which turns into record and battery life. Each time you turn the camera on, you'll need to set this up. Now to program your camera so it won't auto turn off after a few minutes, you'll do this. Go to setup and then scroll down until you see something that either says power save or eco mode and then go ahead and click into that and then turn power save or eco mode off. It varies based on which model you have. Also, if you see an option which says demo mode, you'll want to go into that and turn it off as well. 
Continuing with camera settings, this is something you're going to need to do at first time setup only. New cameras shipping in 2017 have an automatic dual video record setting activated in the camera. What this does is to record two files of the same clip in two different formats. What that does effectively is to take up twice as much memory in your SD card as it needs to. So to turn this off, this is what you need to do. Go to menu and then after that point, click on the top right icon that says image quality slash size. Then scroll down to where you find dual video record option and make sure that option is turned off. That will save you this extra file space and allow you to record longer at a time. One final note for those of you who are using the USB power pack style camera battery, to confirm the correct battery is powering your camera, once you have text on screen set up as explained earlier in this manual, look at your screen and if in the top right hand corner you see a battery icon, either dead or partly charged or anything at all that shows a battery, that means you're drawing power from the small internal battery in the camera. You need to click the external power pack battery on the side once connected for it to take over as the main battery for the camera. Otherwise, if you use the internal battery, that camera will die within 30 to 45 minutes. Once you have clicked the external battery and it is turned on, the battery icon on the LCD will disappear. This is what you want and it confirms the larger battery is active as the power source for the camera. One quick note before we put the tower in the air, there's a leveling bubble on the high pod head where the camera sits and you want that to be right in the center so your horizon line is even. That can make the difference between a shot that looks like this or like this. Unit is set to elevate. The camera should be mounted on the head, all cables attached, LCD on the tubes, legs locked and extended, and plate firmly on the ground. Your high pod handle and head should be connected via the nylon cords. The X17 is three stages, the X23 is four, and the X31 is six stages. Each stage of tubing has a cam lock that secures the tube in place. To elevate your unit, unlock the cam lock, push the tube into the air to your desired height, and lock the cam lock again. This will squeeze the poles together so that they cannot move. You will see a white line on the end of each tube recommending where the placement of the tube should be locked. There are safety pins for the bottom stages of the high pod tubes. For the X23, there is a single pin for the fourth stage, whereas for the 31, there are three for the fourth, fifth, and sixth stages. On the X17, there is no pin as it's not required. Find the hole at the bottom of each high pod stage, take the pin, and push the pin through the hole. This will prevent the tube from slipping if a cam lock for some reason fails. On each stage of the high pod tubes, there is a strip of Velcro to keep the cables out of the way. Take the Velcro strip, open it, place the cable inside, and close it again. Beyond keeping the cables neat, it helps to act as a strain relief throughout the unit.